Tonight on Talk TV, Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss go head-to-head -head live. They both want to be your next Prime Minister. Welcome to the Sun Showdown, fight for number 10. Good evening. In just over six weeks, either Rishi Sunak or Liz Truss will be waking up in Downing Street for their first full day as the United Kingdom's 56th Prime Minister. But before they can think about unpacking their belongings, receiving the nuclear codes, or maybe even changing the wallpaper, they'll be out to impress Sun readers. For the next hour, the two candidates will hopefully be answering questions from Britain's toughest crowd. Our interrogators this evening have come from across the country and are evenly split in their support for Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss. Some are members of the Conservative Party. Others are floating voters. Their questions haven't been seen in advance by either party. In other words, it is what it is. Now, one person who knows exactly what will be on the minds of Sun readers is Editor-in-Chief editor of The Sun, Victoria Newton. She's with some of them now. Victoria... What do you think Sun readers will be wanting to hear over the next 60 minutes? Thanks, Kate. Um, well, I think the number one thing they're going to be most interested in hearing is what the candidates would do to help them with the cost of living. Every day I get hundreds of emails from readers asking for advice and tips on how to pay their bills. I think, um, secondly, they're going to want to know what they're going to do about illegal immigration. How do you stop those small boats that keep arriving on our shores on a daily basis? And thirdly, they're going to be really concerned that both candidates are committed to Brexit. All topics we're going to come back to during this debate. And Victoria, why are Sun readers such an interesting constituency for whoever ends up as our next Prime Minister? I think it's largely uh, because our readers are very much swing voters. Um, they also are huge up and down the whole country. Um, so to give you some examples, Sun readers voted in their droves for Tony Blair back in 97. Uh, some of them went on to vote for Gordon Brown, some then swung to David Cameron, and huge numbers of them voted for Boris Johnson in 2019. So politicians always want to know what they think and which way they're, they're going, what things con are concerning to them. Thank you for that, Victoria. More from you later. Our format for this evening, candidates will give a short answer to the initial question and then the debate shall flourish. My job title here is moderator, not referee, so please... Let's make this a clean, fair fight. As my mum says, if everyone talks at once, then nobody gets heard. So we'll go to our audience in just a moment. But first, it's time for the opening pitches to our Sun readers. Rishi Sunak, yours first. The challenges we face today are immense. Energy bills doubling, inflation at a 40-year high. Yet amidst those challenges, we shouldn't lose heart because there are incredible opportunities, not least because of Brexit. Like many of you, I was proud to vote for that. Now I've got a plan to overcome these challenges and seize those opportunities. I'll grip inflation and get you the help you need with your bills. I'll get our economy growing, cutting EU red tape and getting our taxes down. And I will do whatever it takes to tackle illegal migration. Now I'm not going to pretend that this is all going to be easy, but as Chancellor, you saw that I successfully helped 10 million people protect their jobs and the economy through COVID. So I've got a record that you can believe in. And as your Prime Minister, I know that together we can face down those challenges and seize those opportunities because Britain's potential is limitless. Rishi Sunak, thank you. You, Liz Truss. The next election is going to be about the cost of living. We have only two years to show the British people that we can deliver and make their lives better. As Prime Minister, I would put money back in people's pockets from day one driving growth and delivering opportunities with a new growth plan. It's wrong that we currently have the highest tax burden in this country that we've had for 70 years. And I believe that Sun readers want us to keep to our manifesto commitment of not raising taxes. I'm somebody who does what I say I will do. I've delivered on trade deals, I've delivered on Brexit opportunities, and I've delivered on standing up to Vladimir Putin in Ukraine. Britain's best days lie ahead of us. 
We need to reject the voices of decline. We need to stop apologising for being conservative and start working to build our country. I will run a government of all the talents that unleashes the potential right across our fantastic country. Candidates, thank you both very much. Now, this is a reader's debate, a Sun reader's debate, and you are both Sun readers, so I would like to open this debate by giving you the first question. Liz Truss, what would you like to ask Rishi Sunak? Well, I've had the opportunity over the past few weeks to ask Rishi lots of questions, and I think I might have actually run out of questions uh, to ask him. Look, I want to have a fair campaign, and the major debate between Rishi and I is about the economy. What I am promising is to deliver tax cuts straight away and to relieve the burden on Sun Reader's pockets and bills. For example, the Green Levy has put extra money on people's energy bills. I don't think people can afford that in the current circumstances, so I would reduce that. And what I would ask Rishi is what he would do on day one on becoming Prime Minister to actually relieve the money that people are struggling to pay out of their household budgets. Rishi Sunak, would you like to answer? Well, you know what? I was uh, going to ask Liz how she was spending her birthday because for everyone watching, it's Liz's birthday today. So, happy birthday, Liz. Thank and not you. The, I'm sure not the, the best way to spend it. But on this, on this central question, and all Sun readers watching, you, you know what I've done over the past couple of years to help the country get through some really difficult times, whether it was creating the furlough scheme that hopefully protected many people's jobs who are watching and, and listening tonight. And just the, one of the last things I did as Chancellor was to make sure that we put support in place over the autumn and winter to help everyone with their energy bills, because I knew they were going to go up a lot. And everyone's going to receive help, and the most vulnerable in our society are going to get around £1,200. So that's an enormous help with the bills. But I've always said that I'll do more as the situation demands it. And if it looks as it does look likely now that energy bills are even higher than we thought, then of course I as Prime Minister would come back and do more to help people through, because that's what I've done for the last couple of years. But the other thing I'd also do is make sure that we do think about our children and our grandchildren. And everything we do now has an impact on them. And all the proposals that you hear from me or Liz or anyone else, you've got to think, well, if we're going to borrow to do all those things, what does that actually mean? What that actually means is that we're putting it on the country's credit card well, and we're, we're asking we're our back. children... We're going to come back. We're going to explore a lot of this in the debate. So just before we get into that, Liz Truss, would you like to answer Rishi Sunak's question? How, well, is this how you'd like to spend your birthday? <laughs> well, I've had a great birthday so far. I've got lots of cakes and presents as I've been touring around the country, which is uh, fantastic. I'm looking forward to, after this debate, having dinner with my family and, uh, uh, and celebrating after that. The, look, the issue here is we have anemic growth in this country. And we need to fix that. We need to get growth going. We've got the lowest growth projected in the G7. If we put up taxes, which is what Rishi is proposing, corporation tax, that will mean companies are less likely to invest in the United Kingdom, and we're more likely to be heading to a recession. And we know what a recession means. I grew up in Paisley and Leeds in the 1980s and 1990s, I know what it looks like when economic times are hard. It looks like people losing their jobs, not having enough money to support their families, and we end up paying more. We end up with our benefits bill going up. We end up with the cost of public services going up. Well, let's show it's a false economy. Because it is a false topic I'd like to talk it, about. It's a tonight. false economy to say that somehow. By raising taxes, we're going to bring more money in. Well, let's, let's no, hear from our first we're going to people Let's off hear work. from John, because he's the first person that we've got tonight. So, John Hughes, you're in Birmingham. John, what's your question for the candidates? I am indeed. Well, since I've had, I was diagnosed with cancer and I've had the operation, and that, I was promised loads and loads of care and whatever else. I've had to rely on a company called... Alp Harry, Alp Others, it's a cancer-based charity. I had no help at all from Macmillan or my cancer nurses. Why is the NHS broken? And that's a question to Mr Sunak and Mrs Truss. Wishy Sunak, to you first. Well, John, I'm really sorry to hear about that and I'm, I'm glad that you're at least now getting the, the support that you need. 
I grew up in an NHS family, I'm not John. Mr. Sunak. Sorry, I can't hear you, but I th you mentioned a company that was helping you. Is that right? It's a, a cancer-based charity, Help Harry, Help Others, and without them, I, 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 well, I, I don't know where, what I would have done. Right. No, well, I'm, I'm glad they're able to provide some support to you. But look, I, I grew up in an NHS family. My mum was a local chemist, my dad was a GP, so I know firsthand what an enormous difference healthcare makes. And the reason the NHS is under strain at the moment is it's because it's recovering from COVID. And we all know that. And we saw what happened during coronavirus to the NHS. We saw the pressure it was put under. And we also saw what was happening in social care. And there are many people like you who are waiting to get the treatment that they need and deserve, particularly with regard to cancer. And that's why I did something really difficult that I'm actually getting a lot of flack for at the moment. And I'm sure we'll talk about it tonight. And I made sure that we got the NHS the funding that it needed to help work through the backlogs, get everyone the care that they needed, and do that as quickly as possible. Now, it wasn't an easy thing for me to do, and as I said, I've got a lot of criticism for it. But I believe it was the right thing to do, because I don't think we can have an NHS, which is ultimately the country's number one public service priority, that is underfunded and not able to deliver the care that it needs. And that's why I think you can be reassured that the NHS is safe in my hands, because I've taken what was a brave decision to get it the support that it needed, and I hope that that is reassurance to you in the future that we'll continue to support the NHS so it helps people like you and millions of others get the treatment that they need. Liz Truss, John's question essentially was that he struggled to get NHS supports and GP appointments. Well, first of all, can I just say to John, I'm incredibly sorry to hear about his experience in the NHS. And in fact, my mum worked as a nurse at St James's Hospital in Leeds, specialising in cancer research. And I know a lot of work goes into that area but we need to do more. And there has been issues during COVID about people being able to get the support that they need. I think the issue is that too often we are directing and micromanaging people on the front line, the doctors and nurses who do the work. And what I want to see is fewer layers of management in the National Health Service and less central direction, because I simply don't think that people can sit there in Whitehall and direct everything that happens in local communities across our country. And I would like to see more support based in GP surgery so fewer people have to end up in hospital. Also focusing on things like ambulance waiting times, which are a real issue as well, particularly in rural areas. And this is all about giving more power locally and making sure that we trust the professionals who really know what they're doing. But I, I really wish you all the best for your recovery, John. So we're going to come back to some of the detail and the Thank economics you. on this in a minute. But, John, you are still with us. Do you feel that that answered your question? I do and I don't, because the Conservatives have had the chance already and it's still not enough for the mm. NHS. I mean, that, it's a good point that John makes there, isn't it, Rishi Sunak? You were the Chancellor, you know the numbers. You yourself have said that NHS funding is unsustainable. We're spending more than ever before, and yet ambulances are queuing up outside mm -hmm. NHS hospitals. Level with us. If the answer's not money, then what is it? Well, the answer has got to be that we need to do things differently. And we need to do things differently so that people get better treatment quicker. And there's lots of different ways that we can do that. And technology is a large part of the answer, whether that's new blood screening techniques that would detect cancers earlier, which we're now trialling, uh, which I think is something that's incredibly exciting. It will mean we can help people get the treatment they need sooner and, and ultimately survive. But also using new forms of surgical hubs to get through this backlog of elective surgery. We can create specialised hubs where surgeons can work really productively to crack through the backlog. I'd like to see more of those. Community diagnostic centres are another innovation that we need to do more of, where you bring together CT scanners and other diagnostic uh, devices in one place in a one-stop shop and the doctors all organize around that and it moves people through the system far quicker and again what I've said is I'd like to see more of those so I think if we use all these different new innovations which is part of my plan Won't to tackle the money, backlog and, 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 and that's what the, this NHS and social care levy that I've put in place which lots of people now say that they want to scrap that's what it's funding but that's it's barely funding, covering the cost it's, right it's, now it's when funding, you're talking it's about funding, innovation. It's funding those community diagnostic centres. It's funding those elective surgical hubs. It's funding the new technology 
that helps physicians focus on what they need to do, which is treating us, rather than bureaucracy and other things. Now, so if we do all those things, and there's a plan that I've published that says that from day one, tackling this backlog will be my number one public service priority, I'm confident that we can get the, the wait list down quicker. People like John will get the treatment that they need quicker. But we're not going to be able to do any of that if the NHS doesn't have the security okay, of the I funding it that needs, and Liz that's Truss, something as Chancellor that I put in place. Point there. Liz Truss, you have said that you want to scrap the national insurance increase. So where will extra money come from for the NHS? So I am committed to the extra money that was announced for the NHS. It is needed to deal with the backlog, and I would fund that money out of general taxation. Under my plans, we will still be able to start paying the debt down within three years. So it is affordable. And the fact is, whatever Rishi says now, we did not need to raise national insurance in order to pay. We did have that money available in the budget. It was a choice to break our manifesto commitment and raise national insurance. I think it was the wrong choice to make. I spoke out against it at the time in Cabinet. I still remain opposed to it, and I will reverse that rise. But on the subject of the National Health Service, I'm committed to the 40 new hospitals that we have agreed to build. I'm afraid some of our hospitals are falling apart. Uh, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Kings Lynn near me, uh, bits of the hospital being held up by stilts. That is not good enough for patients across the NHS. But as well as more money, and we do need to put more money into the physical fabric, we also need to trust the people mm -hmm. in the NHS. And sometimes, to me, there are lots and lots of grand plans and reorganisations, but what it comes down to yeah. is allowing doctors and nurses who know what they're doing the freedom to deliver on the front line. And that's what I'm focused on. I'm focused on the people in our National mm -hmm. Health Service who've done a fantastic job during covid making sure that those yeah. people are empowered to deliver. Because we hear lots of stories about waste, so, for example, prescription... Yeah, I want to ask you very quickly about that, because we don't have a huge amount of time on this section. We've got a lot to get through tonight. Just very quickly to both of you, Rishi Sunak first. When the last time you tried to book a GP appointment, call 111, how long were you on hold for? Well, actually, I... You know, my, my grandfather's just been in hospital for the last few weeks and my daughter's just been in and out of the urgent treatment centre in North Allerton, in North Yorkshire, where I live. So, uh, you know, I, as someone who I do rely on the NHS, as do all of us, and I know that it's people's priority, which is why I was funding it. But if I could just pose a question or to make sure that we talk about these things, I think Liz says that she supports the extra funding going into the NHS mm -hmm. that I've put in, but doesn't support the means of paying for it. Now, and we're going to come back to well, that the, the, in the next section on the economy, I promise but, you. But we're we'll just talking about exactly the NHS, that if we, if we we'll, could we'll just... We'll come back to exactly well, that point. Because, Liz Truss, can I just okay. ask you very quickly, when the last time you tried to book a GP appointment, call 111, how long were you on hold for? Well, I, I called 111 fairly recently. Uh, actually, it was not fairly... It was just before COVID, and I did get, actually, a good service on, on 111. Before COVID. Likewise, I have... Um, my daughter's had to go... Uh, to accident emergency uh, for some specific issues with her hand. And, you know, we got a good, we got a good service at the yeah. time. But I, I recognise I've had friends of mine who've had to wait for longer than that mm. very recently. And I think yeah. things have got more difficult after COVID. And what we need to be yeah. doing is supporting those professionals on the front line. Now let's move on to our next audience question. We're going to talk about cost of living. Sun reader Gemma Keogh from Manchester. Gemma, what's your question for the candidates? Hiya, yes. Yeah. So the cost of living has, has actually gone up massively, but my question today is to ask about um, the meats that has actually gone up that we actually eat. I mean, I used to be able to go to the shopping every Monday to Sunday and, and get you know, a, quite quite a lot of different meats where the, the price of meat has gone up. So I'm thinking, should we turn to vegetarian? And because we all love meat, but I'm not able to afford it as much as what I used to do. So I used to go to the shopping store and used to get meat Monday to Sunday, um, mainly steaks and steaklets. However, now it's twice a week that I mm -hmm. actually attend to the shopping stores when I, when I actually go to okay. the food store. Liz Truss, should Gemma's family go vegetarian? Well, the price of food is a huge issue, and this is a global crisis. We know it's being exacerbated 
by the war in Ukraine, things like fertiliser is more expensive, grain is more expensive. That is feeding through to the costs our farmers are having to pay. And one thing I would do is reduce the red tape on farmers, focus on food production, because this is an important issue to help families across Britain and help make life more affordable for families across Britain. But it's also important that we are resilient and that we have a good food supply in the face of these global shocks. And we're not solely dependent, particularly not on countries that we can't trust. So that is something that I've been focused on as Foreign Secretary, making sure we have resilient supplies of food and energy. Now, on the subject of vegetarianism, of course, that's a personal choice. I, I, I think we've got fantastic meat that we produce in this country. I, I'm a proud representative of a very rural constituency that produces everything from pigs to poultry often, uh, to arable often farmers. Produce, which is produced here, which is fantastic quality, is very expensive. That's not necessarily affordable for Jenna, Gemma. It is, and this is my point about how we need to help our farmers produce more food and be able to produce food in an affordable way. And a lot of that is about the costs of things going into farming. It, we're talking about levelling up. One thing that's really important is we help our rural communities across the United Kingdom. They are struggling as well in this cost of living crisis. So by reducing the regulation, by turbocharging what farmers are able to produce, will help food be more affordable, but will also help those communities yeah. grow. Let's focus on Gemma, because she's listening to these answers. Rishi Sunak, should she have to go vegetarian? Well, Gemma, I'm, you know, I'm sorry to hear about that. And you're not alone, right? Millions of families across the country at the moment are grappling with rising bills in food, filling up your car and everything else in your energy bills. And that's the great challenge that we face at the moment. There's support in place that I've announced that hopefully is finding its way to you already and over the coming months that will help you meet some of those bills. But many families are having to cut back and make changes. And what I want to do is get inflation out of the system as quickly as possible. Because I don't want this problem to last any longer than it needs to. And that's why I'm focused on running our economy in a way where we stamp out inflation quickly. And what I don't want is for you to have to deal with this problem next year and the year beyond. But And with re regard to food, the one specific thing I think we can do is make sure that we hold supermarkets to account because our farmers, and I represent also a very rural patch with lots of farmers, we want to make sure that the supermarkets and all the other people in the supply chain are being fair in how they price these things. Rishi and that no, that one, no one is taking advantage of the situation to pass on price rises that aren't necessary. Very briefly, and that's what I would do as Prime Minister, is hold everyone to account to make sure you get the cheapest possible prices. Rishi for the Sunak, very buy. briefly, how quickly could you make that happen? Because it's all well and good saying that you could work with supermarkets, but Gemma cannot afford to buy meat right now, today. I, that, I mean, that's something we can do very quickly, and it's an ongoing thing. It's not just something we do once. It's something you need to constantly do in government as meet with companies to make sure that the supply chains from the farmer all the way through to the shop where Gemma's buying her food from is done in a way that's fair and that everyone's getting a fair price and people are not taking advantage of the situation with inflation to pass on price increases that are not right. And that's, that's a very practical thing we can do to make sure that the food is as affordable as it can be. Ms. Truss? Of course we need to tackle inflation. And in fact, the Bank of England forecast suggests it will fall next year. And of course, we've got an independent monetary policy run by the Bank of England. And it's primarily their role to target and reduce inflation. I think that's very important. But on the subject of food bills, what we need to make sure is that people are keeping more of their own money. And what has happened is that the tax has been raised on families through national insurance, so they're having to pay more money to the Treasury. I do think it is morally wrong at these, this moment when families are struggling to pay for their food that we have put up taxes on ordinary people when we said we wouldn't in our manifesto and when we didn't need to do Rishi so. Sunak, is that this morally is a, wrong? This, this inflation is a global problem. You know, it's incredibly important we continue to face down Vladimir Putin to end this appalling war, which is causing yeah, some of this food price inflation. That. Is it morally wrong? I think what's morally wrong is asking our children and grandchildren to pick up the tab for the it's bills that true. we're not prepared to meet. It's and if we're now going to have this conversation, true. that would be great, because 
You know, I think we all knew that we did a lot to support the country through COVID, and I don't think anyone thought that there wouldn't be a bill to pay for that. So the question is, who's going to pay that bill? And we had a question right at the beginning about corporation tax. And I think it's entirely reasonable to ask the largest companies in this country, just the top 10% of country uh, companies, to pay a bit more because they received a lot of help during the pandemic. And as we think about, well, how do we fix this problem? How do we fund the things, the public services that we rely on? Is it reasonable to ask the biggest companies in the country to pay a bit more tax? They still will pay a very generous rate of tax compared to most other countries, so it's very competitive and fair. But I think it's reasonable to ask them to contribute to helping us fix the problem. Okay, and that Liz, Liz, wants, Liz, wants to, Liz wants to cut the taxes for big business. Well, I don't think that's fair. Let, no, with, regard, with, regard, with, with regard to, if I could just finish, finish this, this question about what's morally right and wrong, right, it, it's important what we leave our kids and our grandkids. And I think it is important to think about that inheritance. Yeah. And I don't want to pass them a bill that we couldn't be okay. bothered to pick up And ourselves. you made that point. You've made that point in previous debates. And we've talked about inflation at some length. Liz Trust, your policies, ec economists warn, will rise, inflation will rise under can, your plans. How much will people's mortgages go up? Can, can you I, level with them? Can I just make the point about corporation tax? I am not talking about cutting corporation tax. I'm talking about not raising corporation tax. Under Rishi's plan, we will end up raising corporation tax to the same level it is in France, more than 10 percentage points higher than it is in Ireland. And companies have a choice about whether they invest in the UK or whether they invest elsewhere. Rishi's policies are making us less competitive. We were in Stoke yesterday. We heard from people working at local ceramics manufacturers. Those people's jobs rely on that investment. The fact is, that if you put up corporation tax too high, you get less money into the exchequer. So all this talk about we're going to be paying these debts off, we're not going to be paying these debts off if we go into recession and the tax take goes down from companies and the tax take goes down from people because they're out of work. So we're that is the reality. We'll be and, back and in recession. Kate, can I just plan. say, we are, pro we are currently projected to head for a recession We've currently got the lowest projections of growth rates in the G7. The problem we have, the biggest problem we face, is a lack of economic growth. And economic growth is not just a number on a spreadsheet. Well, let's get economic an answer in growth here from Rishi is about Sunak, because remember, jobs our, our and audience and readers want to hear these answers. So, recession, Rishi Sunak. Well, let's take all these points. I, I think it, Sun readers will have to make up their own mind, but I think Sun readers are sensible enough and have enough common sense to know that you don't get something for nothing and we do need to pay for things. I think everyone accepts that. So the question is, how do we pay for things? I think it's reasonable to ask the largest companies because my plans only apply to the largest companies for to pay a little bit more. I think that's fair. For the smallest companies, nothing's going to change because I want to support small businesses like my mum growing up. Small businesses, our pubs, our restaurants are getting a cut on their business rates this year, something the Sun has campaigned for. Small companies are getting help to employ staff. They're getting a tax cut on that. And of course I care about our international competitiveness. I've spent really? my life Made in business internationally. And that experience has told me that what we need to do to support growth in this country is to get our companies investing. It's no good them making lots of profits that they just then all dividend out to their shareholders. We want them to invest that money back in the economy. That's how we drive growth and we get better paying jobs. So what I propose to do is to cut taxes for businesses that do the right thing. And that's businesses that are investing in our economy because that's how we'll grow it. That's okay. how we'll create better jobs for Sun Readers. OK, I need to ask you a very, very quick fire could, question. We, we, we need to move on to the are... next section. I need to ask you first, Liz Trust, fracking, yes or no? Yes, if local communities support it. Rishi Sunak, fracking, yes or no? Yes, if local communities support it. Will you reverse the fuel juicy cut, list Trust, yes or no? I will look at it in the budget. I'll have a budget straight away. So no guarantee, Rishi Sunak? When you say reverse the fuel duty cut, yeah. I mean, I put in place the largest fuel duty cut, I think, in, in history, yeah. thanks to the campaign of The Sun and its readers over many years. So I don't think it needs to be reversed. It's in place and it's making yeah. a difference. Sorry, I'll it. Will you keep that? It, I, it, it, it is in place. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, sorry, Kate, I, didn't, I misunderstood the question. No, I will keep any cuts we've already made. Yes. I thought you were talking about okay. potential future cuts. OK, which I need to move on to our budget. next audience member question. So Andrew Snarsky from London. Andrew, your question, please. Yes. Good evening, Liz. 
The question, I work as a coordinator for a logistics company at Heathrow Airport, and my main, my, my main worry is the winter fuel bills. What do you plan to do about the winter fuel bills? And for Rishi, I want to ask you a question. Do you actually have the guts to stand up to Putin this winter when he turns off all the gas pipes to Europe? Rishi Sunak first. Yes, Andrew, is the quick answer. And the reason you can believe me is because, as Chancellor, I did a couple of things that demonstrates that strength. A, a, couple of, oh, a year and a half ago, I made sure that our armed forces got the largest uplift in funding that they've had since the end of the Cold War to make sure that we're protected against threats like Putin. As Chancellor, I also worked with all my finance ministers around the world to put in place a sanctions package, the likes of which we had never seen, to try and tighten the grip on Putin's war machine, stop funding going to him. And it does require toughness to stand up to him, and it is going to require all of us to go through some difficult times. And I want to be honest with you about that. Part of us standing up to Putin is all of us as a country recognising what that's going to do to our energy bills and having the resolve to get through that, supporting people as we go, because ultimately that's what our values are about. It's about protecting those countries that are being attacked. It's about standing up for freedom. And as we have done brilliantly, and I know many Sun readers have done, opened up their families, their hearts, their communities to refugees from Ukraine, there's lots of different ways we can stand up to him. And I'm sure we will keep doing all of them. We certainly will under my leadership.